Hey, what's up guys? Coming at you from the iPhone today because uh, my cousin came down from Georgia and well, I left the GoPro in his car. So that's in the mail on the way back to me. However, I got some other mail today from 2ZRS and uh, Prime MR2 and it's uh, things for the MR2. So I'm gonna show you guys what I got and then I'm gonna install them out of the car. And then after I get that done, I'm going out to Tampa with Tyler and we're picking up a car. So. Stay tuned, you guys will see all that. So, I got a uh, clutch master cylinder, brand new. Those are actually pretty inexpensive, like 17 or 18 bucks. I got a slave cylinder. Then I got a soft clutch line because the hard line's really hard to put in and uh, it kind of bends in some weird shapes and Mine was all messed up, and I would have had to retap it and put on new fittings, so I just went with the uh, SW20 line, which is just about the same length. So uh, we're going to put that in and see how it works today, and uh, if it does work, then you guys will know that this is an option. Also got some new shifter cable bushings, because one's missing on mine, and why not have brand new ones when they only cost 20 bucks? So I'm going to put all this stuff in today, and uh, yeah, so... Check out Twos R Us, check out Prime MR2. They have plenty of stuff that you're gonna need for your car for a good price. And they package it up well and ship it quickly. So check them out. So I couldn't really record it because I have nothing to hold my phone, but I got the uh, master cylinder in here and then I got the uh, hard line attached, routed through the OEM hard line place. And then I ran it down along next to the gas tank and then was able to pull it out right here with a lot of slack left over but i do i did realize that there's supposed to be like an extension hose there's a rubber flex hose that comes uh oem and uh i'm gonna grab the oem replacement for it um it's another braided cable but it prevents flex from destroying the integrity of this cable from the engine moving back and forth from you know driving because poly mounts so uh so yeah i'm going to get the other uh line for this and then i also have to find a bleeder replacement because my transmission didn't come with um a slave cylinder on it so the bleeder wasn't on the slave cylinder and i know most slave cylinders just have the bleeder you know like right here or whatever but this one actually has like a line that comes off and then the bleeder so you can like hold it up in the air i think for making it the highest point when you bleed the system i'm not really sure but I got to try to find a way to replace that. So I'm going to leave that for now and not really touch that because I got to get the right stuff for it. So I'm going to move on to the uh, shifter cable bushings because I got the new kit right here. And we can put those in and get them attached and uh, see how it all feels. So I'm going to uh, pop out this one and then clean up the both of these with the sandpaper that was provided in the kit right here. And then once I got those cleaned up, I'll pop in these new bearings and then uh, attach it to the linkage. So I'll get that done real quick and then give you guys an update. All right, so got the uh, shifter cable bushings all put in and installed. Um, and then I got the uh, clutch line, wherever it is, all routed up down here too. But uh, I don't have the screws for the uh, slave cylinder, so I gotta go get those from the store. And then um, this line also doesn't attach directly to the slave cylinder. There's supposed to be a piece that mounts down there so the extra slack doesn't get pulled on because it'll eventually wear down the line so i got to get that as well i think uh i think i actually bought that and then i left it where i bought it but i'm going out to tampa today to get a 240 and that's actually where i bought the clutch line set up so depending on how close i am to where i got all that stuff perhaps maybe i can stop out there and get it but um pretty much done with this for now um since you know, I got nothing else to do. And uh, currently I'm just waiting on Tyler and then we're gonna head out to Tampa and pick up a 240. Um, the 240 has an engine and it's it's an auto shell. It's got the auto transmission, but it was running and driving like when the kid got it and then he just tore the engine out of it. So I'm not really sure why all that happened, but I'm more focused on, you know, my part of it, which is the car, because uh, Tyler's getting the engine. So um, I'm going to use pretty much everything from that car to put onto this one and then uh, get rid of the shell. So that's what we're going to do. As long as I have like a, if I have a quarter 
All right, so we got the 240 back and this thing's in better condition than I thought. So it's got 80K on the uh, odometer. It's a single owner. It was bought off the lot by the grandma who owned it for the last uh, 27 years. And uh, yeah, so besides the engine that Tyler now has, um, the fender, the hood, and some of the interior bits are gone. But other than that, um, it's got pretty much everything else. Uh, it's got an auto trans. It's got the uh, full engine harness, injectors. It's got an exhaust system in there. Uh, it's, you know, it's got pretty much everything. So um, I'm going to uh, take everything that I need off this car to uh, make the coupe run. And then I'm going to probably put this back up for sale because uh, for what I got it for, um, there's pretty much no way I can't make money. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty much going to uh, start getting to that. And then once I got everything off, I'm going to take it all back to the house and start putting it on the coupe. Because, um, yeah, I want to get that running really, really bad. And uh, now I got a car that literally has pretty much everything I need, even down to the OEM exhaust. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to show you guys the car a little bit, and then I'm going to start tearing the stuff off. If you come in the car here and look at the dash, it's only got 81,000 miles on it. Everything's in pretty good condition. Unfortunately, the dash is uh, pretty cracked up, but even the uh, dash vent's in really good condition. So... There's that. It's still got the uh, stock stereo. Um, but yeah, I'm even going to take out all the AC stuff and put that in the coupe too because uh, this is Florida and uh, it's really hot out and we need AC. If you look down there, it's still got the ECU in here, but it's a 25, not a 28, and it's a auto ECU. So got to look in to see if that works. Glove box still works. The uh, passenger side door panel is really mint and the window works really well, but this one's kind of torn up. And then, uh, yeah, got all the other stuff back here. It came with the uh, OEM tire stopper, which is pretty neat. I think that's cool. I'm probably going to uh, restore that just because it's a cool piece to have and it kind of looks like crap right now. So, yeah. So that's how she sits right now. They even got the, uh, the add-on pinstripe put on from uh, the dealership, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, the person who I bought it from sprayed a lot of the car down with like a rust oxidizer paint to prevent, I guess, some of the surface rust that he saw. Um, I think he went a little overboard with it, but you know, 16 year olds with spray paint cans, what do you expect? But, uh, yeah, this, this hatch is actually really nice too. So I'm thinking about taking this and just keeping it on hand because, uh, I got another one I can throw on here that's in a lot worse shape and it's just been sitting in my backyard and this one doesn't have spoiler holes or anything it doesn't have rust anywhere so uh probably gonna keep that and then uh yeah so that's that's what we're working with with the car so for a car with eighty thousand miles you'd think that it would be in better condition in the areas that it's not in better condition and then uh yeah i think that's a little strange but at least it's got everything there still so i'm gonna start pulling the car apart and get the dash out get the harnesses out get the ac stuff out and uh go from there all right, so I got the exhaust out, put it on the ground over there. Then I jacked it up and I got the transmission out. So now that those are out, I thought I would have been able to uh, push the car around, but Dylan's driveway is pretty steep, so I can't really push it up by myself. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna start pulling out the power harness. And then once I get the power harness out, I'm going to uh, see what's next. But basically all this stuff has to come out and go into my coupe. So I just gotta make sure I take it out and remember how it goes in, so. All right, so I got the 240 in the garage. Uh, we didn't have very many hands, so I put a comforter on the back bumper and pushed it in with the SC300. It worked very well. So uh, now that I have that in here and it's the next day, I'm going to uh, pull off the fenders and the bumper and I'm going to start pulling out the uh, chassis harness and then I'm gonna pull off um, as much of the fuel system as I can because I, I don't think my car actually even has fuel hard lines to run. And then uh, I'm gonna pull off the brake lines and pretty much anything else you see in here that I would need to run a KA. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to get to work on this and catch up with you guys in a little bit. Time to remove the original radio and then the AC stuff and then the cluster and then the dashboard and then the harness. Now that the dash is out, time to get out the power harness and all the AC boxes. This is Florida. So, I mean, like when you have the opportunity to put AC in your car, you probably want to put AC in your car. So yeah, I got the full setup here. There's no way I'm not capitalizing on this opportunity and getting the coupe cold, so. So I just pulled out the seat and I found a bunch of these and, and one of these 
don't do drugs kids or you might end up with a minty 80,000 mile 240. All right, so I got the bumper off. That was a bit of a nightmare. Um, a lot of the rust is primarily up in this front area where there was clearly an accident at some point. So um, it seems like when that accident happened, um, a lot of the uh, rust issues began. So uh, it was a bit of a hassle to get the bumper off, but it's off now. So I'm going to pull out the AC system and finish pulling out the main power harness right here. And then once I got those out, I think I'm gonna take all this stuff back to my house and uh, get it into the 240. Cause um, all the other stuff can be ironed out later. It's just, uh, you wanna try to do it one step at a time, get the car running and then move on to, you know, all the other things. So, uh, so yeah, I'm probably gonna take care of the uh, brakes and the AC stuff last. Um, yeah, I'll update you guys in a little bit. All right, so I got pretty much everything out. Power steering setup, AC stuff, pretty much everything. Uh, fuel lines, fuel filter. So uh, all I got left is the brakes and uh, those little grommets you see there, because I want to make sure I have all those little things. Got the old harness removed, about to put in the one from the hatch. All right, so I'm out here messing with the 240 and I uh, just got the battery charged over at AutoZone. Um, so I thought maybe that was a problem with why the fuel pump's not working, but um, it's not because when I jump the EGR relay, it primes just fine. And uh, now I've found out something else. I mean, I didn't really find out, but I noticed. So if I turn the key on and I take the fuel pump uh, level and I push it up, it, it goes up on the, on the cluster. You guys can't really see because I can't turn the camera around while I'm recording, but the cluster's down there. And when I lift up the leveler, it goes up on the cluster, um, indicating, you know, it's a half a tank or full tank or whatever. So um, the fuel pump's definitely getting power. Um, so I'm not really seeing why it's not priming other than it being an ECU issue. But I have three ECUs right here. I got um, a 28, which is the manual. I got a 25, which is an auto. And then I got another 28 which is tuned by rs enthalpy so i'm not really sure why it's not priming other than maybe i don't have something grounded out so i'm gonna go over the chassis again and make sure i got everything grounded and uh see if you know maybe i can find something if that'll solve the issue but uh still digging all right so we're in the middle of a full-scale game of musical chairs but with the cars so gotta move everything around so i can get the coupe in here because it's getting to that point in Florida where it's it's too hot to be working outside. It's like two o'clock and I'm just dripping beads, man. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get the coupe in the garage and uh, work on that in here because this is ridiculous. But now you guys get to see how extreme it is. The two Gs, the 240s, and the MR2. Too many cars, but it works. Well, the FedEx guy just came by and look what he dropped off. This is the wire harness for the MR2. So, we got that now. So, I guess I'm gonna be working on that soon here. All right, so, I got all the cars moved around. Got the MR2 out here, got the G here. I know it doesn't seem like much, but none of these cars run at the current moment in time. So, it's, it's a bit more of a test than you think it is. So, got the coupe inside, got the coupon jack stands. So now it's time to get to work on it. A little bit of an explanation here. The reason this G doesn't run is the same reason this car doesn't run. I shorted the ECU on this car, so I took the ECU from this car, and this one already had the uh, Uprev Osiris license on it, so I mailed it out to get adjusted so it would work on the uh, hatch again. Well, not again, but so the hatch would work again because the ECU I had for the hatch is, it's gone, it's fried. I killed it. Oops. But uh, yeah, so... Once I get that ECU back, that'll run, and then the, the hatch will run again, and then uh, this is gonna run here in the next day or two, and then I actually got the harness for the MR2 today, so I get to work on that as well. So I'm gonna give you guys an update here in a little bit and show you what I'm doing with the uh, S13 coupe, and then uh, we'll see you in a little bit. So I was gonna go over to Ace Hardware and pick up some bolts, but Ace Hardware is closed. So uh, I went over to Jack's house to uh, see if I could find what I'm looking for, on the old uh, vert hatch, so uh, or vert coupe. So, uh, oh yeah, it's not on the trailer anymore. Ooh, I might have to get under this thing. So here's the vert coupe. You guys know this thing exists. Uh, just here to pull some things off it because Ace Hardware is closed. So 
I'm going to see if what I'm looking for is here. And if it's not, well, then we'll move on and go back home and work with what we can. All right. So one of the things that I need on the car is there. So the manual clutch pedal has a button on it. So when you press the uh, pedal in, it tells the car that it's ready to start. Uh, mine doesn't have that. So I need to come back over here. And I think I'm just going to remove the whole pedal and then uh, pull the thing off when I get home because I can't really get a wrench behind it and it's super rusty. So I'd rather spray it down with some WD-40 and clean it up before I uh, try to wrench it off there because I really don't want to break it and have to buy a new one. So I'm going to get my tools right now from the car and then go back over there and grab it. Okay, so after hours and hours of troubleshooting, I finally figured it out. Um, it's going to sound stupid, but it was grounds. I've never really messed with a 240 before, so just bear with me here. So, uh, oh, I forgot my keys. Hey, let me get those keys, wherever they are. So, um, basically... What was happening is I was turning on the uh, ignition and the fuel pump would not prime and um, the ECU light wouldn't turn on either. So I thought that maybe I had a bad ECU, but as you can see here, I have three ECUs. So the likelihood of all of them being bad when people told me they're good is probably pretty low when I trust these people. So uh, now it's working properly. The ECU is lighting up as it should. And uh, yeah, so tomorrow the goal is to try to get the car running. So um, I'm going to end the video here. And uh, sorry, it's been a while since my last upload. I've just been distracted with life and things like that. So uh, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.